Number 61. A sandal is dropped from the top of a 15 meter high mast on a ship moving at 1.75 meters per second due south. Calculate the velocity of the sandal when it hits the deck of the ship, letter A, relative to the ship, and then letter B, relative to a stationary observer on shore. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on. Here's a stationary observer. Uh, he's on the shore or she's on the shore. And here's our boat and it's moving at a certain velocity due south at 1.75 meters per second. All right, so this is the basic picture, all right, of what's going on. Now, relative to the perspective of different individuals, a ball that is dropped on this ship will look different, all right? So for example, if you're on the ship, all right, the perspective of something dropping from the top of a 15 meter high mass and all the way down to the bottom, it would have a fair, uh, not a fairly, but a straight downward trajectory, all right, pure Y trajectory, all right? Because you're on the ship, right? Here you are, look at you. And uh, all you notice is you're moving, your velocity is moving with the ship, right? So the only thing that's changing is the Y component of that, uh, what is it, sandal, all right? So now if you're a perspective, uh, if your perspective changes to now where you are on shore, Okay, there's two things going on. There's two velocities relative to your velocity. There is not only the, the sandal dropping, right? Not only is the sandal dropping down in the Y direction, but the boat is also moving south, right? It also has a horizontal component to it. So the trajectory will look somewhat like this now, right? As I have detailed, all right? So we're gonna get two different answers depending upon the perspective, and that's the whole point of the problem. So, without further ado, let's take a look at letter A. So letter A says, calculate the velocity of the sandal when you're or relative to the ship when you're on the ship. Okay, so it's gonna look like this. So it's a pure Y problem, right? So what do we know? We know that the sandal initially starts at zero, all right? Um, because it says it's dropped, it doesn't say it had an initial velocity to it at all, it just says it was released. So the assumption is that it's zero at the start. Gravity is pulling on it, right? So the acceleration is negative 9.80 meters per second squared. Uh, what else do we got going on here? There is a certain final velocity to it, right? In the Y direction uh, that we don't know. And it, we also know that the, the Y displacement is going to be negative 15, all right? Meters. Start high and low should be negative, all right? And also the time, right? We also don't know the time it takes. So that's another question. Cool. So now um, let's try to see, can we come up with a formula that where we can find the final velocity in the Y and we know the acceleration, we know the initial and we know the displacement. Is there any formula like that? Yeah, there is, right? Equation number four here. So let's use it. All right. So we have the final velocity in the Y direction squared plus the, oh, not plus, equals the initial velocity in the Y direction squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by that displacement. So we have the final velocity squared is equal to the initial, but that whole thing was zero, right? Plus two times now that acceleration of negative 9.80 multiplied then by negative 15. All right, so now we have final velocity in the Y squared would be equal to, so two times 9.8 times 15, and we get 294. So this works out to be square root of 294. Great, well, not square root yet, that's just 294, right? 294 and then to solve we have to take the square root of both sides so that would be now the final velocity in the y direction remember whenever you take the square root it's always plus and negative right plus and minus so square root of 294 is going to be 17.1 right 17.1 meters per second now just remember which value should it be plus or minus think about the direction in which the sandal is traveling it's traveling down negative y direction Therefore, we choose the negative answer. All right, great. So here is the final velocity in the Y. Now, let's take a look at letter B. Relative to a stationary observer unsure. So letter B now, um, remember it will have this tra uh, trajectory now. So it has both X and Y components to it, right? So now in order to solve then the final velocity at the bottom here, we have to find both X and Y components to it. Right now, we actually do know both X and Y components already. Okay, 
Why? Well, we know that the boat is moving, the velocity of the boat, right, is moving in the pure x direction. Now the velocity then, the initial velocity, let's just say, of the boat, all right, um, is going to be 1.75 meters per second. Now, is there or are there any accelerations in the x frame here? No, right? There are no accelerations. It doesn't say anything about the ship is accelerating, whatever. It just says it's moving at this velocity. We are to assume it is then have, maintaining a constant velocity. Otherwise, if we don't, I mean, we could never calculate it. We'd have to assume some acceleration. That would be totally random. So this would be zero meters per second squared. And I know, though, if my acceleration is zero, remember, that means the velocity is always constant. So therefore, the final velocity then of the boat, right, should also be 1.75 meters per second. And you might say, well, final of what? Initial of what? My, the two frames of my problem are this. I'm considering the top here to be the initial, right, and the bottom here to be the final state of conditions. So I'm concerned about the final state of conditions. So I just deduce that the final velocity of that boat, sorry, the final velocity of that boat should be 1.75 meters per second. Now, I also just found out the final velocity in the y direction. So guess what? Now I can calculate this because I have both x and y components. So how do we do that? Well, create a nice little coordinate system for yourself. All right. Plug in or right draw in, I should say. Let's say that that vector right here represents the 1.75. All right, meters per second, All right? And um, so what do we get? So that's that, and then we have the Y component here. Sorry, just looking for it. We have the Y component now uh, moving down, right? So here, let's say, moving downward now, okay? So here we go, we have a negative 17.1, right, meters per second. And now how do we calculate then the velocity overall? Remember, it's just the resultant velocity, correct? So here we go. So we can draw it just like that. Okay. So now, let's see. So we draw a little arrow. Here's our resultant vector. All right. So now we can do Pythagorean's theorem if you like to solve this. Okay. Um, there's another formula too that is a reworked Pythagorean's theorem that simply solves for the resultant vector right, you know, right off the bat. It's the square root of the sum of the x components squared plus the sum of the y components squared. I like that formula better. It's just faster, but you can use Pythagorean's theorem. It really does not matter. So now simply just plug in. We have, um, what do we got? So plug in the x value of 1.75, 1 1.75 squared, plus then it's a negative, but it's squared, so it's going to turn out to be positive. 17.1 squared. So now simply just calculate the value. So we get square root of 1.75 squared plus 17.1, which is negative squared. And we get 17, I mean, almost the same thing. It's really 17.2, right? 17.2 uh, meters, meters per second. That would be then the overall velocity, 17.2 meters per second, all right? And it make it should make some somewhat sense, right? The velocity, the final velocity here, overall should be a little larger than just the y component itself because it also had a little x component. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.